Hey everyone, and it's the first video I'm making in my kitchen. I make this kind of iced tea, I, not iced tea, it's an iced coffee, what am I thinking? But I make an iced coffee where I do pour over and then I put it in the freezer. Well, not freezer, fridge, but you'll understand why I was making the confusions. I make my, my water in a tea kettle. What I do is I'll take I'll take an old bottle, this is from Stoke Cold Brew, and I'll fill it roughly to the first nurdle with some half and half, or creamer, or whatever you want. I'll also add some honey, which you can kind of see in the bottom, but as I, when I put it in, I'll put it into the freezer, which really super chills it. It usually ends up kind of frozen at one point, but I start out my pour over, make my pour over as you normally would. I don't usually use like, since this is about six to eight cup pour over, I'll usually use like anywhere from like nine to 12 scoops. This time I did 10, it's roughly a scoop, which is about a tablespoon per cup of coffee. What I did at first, you probably saw me pouring water, that was just kind of wetting, making the filter wet and clearing out any like papery flavors. But I'll pretty much make the pour over, which is a longer process than I wanna really make a video on, but we'll see if I just skipped over the full process because after this I will let it sit for a bit, kind of let all of the water seep through and kind of cool the coffee down a little bit, but that's just for ease with pouring it into a plastic jug. If you wanted a pour over that was fresh coffee, you would probably just let all the water drip through, pull off the filter and pour it into a cup and add whatever creamer you want, but I'm making an iced coffee. And I actually have the last time I made this, the iced coffee in here, so I know it's tasty. And for those of you wondering, this actually has measurements on the kind of handle size, so I filled it just above about 12,000 milliliters. And that's roughly the right amount for the plastic reused bottle that I use. 
If you have a bigger bottle, it may just be that you need to fill this to 1500, which is the water max level. Or you may need to do maybe to a thousand bits. And by that I mean two kettles filled to the thousand. Because it's a little easier to measure when you have more than 500, which is the minimum that this actually takes. Ideally, you would be using a gooseneck kettle, but I haven't bought myself one of those yet, and this is totally fine. And after I've poured out pretty much all of the water in here, I just let it sit. probably kind of hear it. That was pretty much it, so I usually will let it sit for another like 15 minutes to an hour just because I have other things to do and I know you wouldn't want to see me just standing here for half an hour watching other YouTube videos that you may or may not be interested in. So I will cut to after this is all the way, all the way done. Alright, so slightly different change of video, but it's done. I removed the filter and then you just pour it in. And the cool thing is that you can kind of see the difference in cream and coffee. But I will sometimes add cream halfway through as well. But I'm just going to finish this off because I know I probably put enough cream in already. Actually, the difference in cream is a lot more noticeable here. Then I will usually top it up to about here. And then I will put the lid on, swirl it around. Give it a shake and then put it in the fridge, wait a day, and it's done. And you can enjoy it. You can probably enjoy it right now, but I like iced coffee, so that's why I'm putting it in the fridge for a while. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I know this is the first time I've tried to explain cooking or making something in the kitchen. If you like this content, feel free to let me know and I'll make more of it in the future.